board meeting. May we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, are there any adjustments to the agenda? We have um, an addition for a middle school swim assistant. I believe it's 7F. Okay. And you have the nomination form in front of you. You should have. Okay. It's, okay, great. Anything else? Um, moving on to item two, approval of school board minutes um, from our regular meeting Tuesday, January 11th. May I have a motion to approve those, please? I motion to, I motion to approve the school board minutes for January 11th, 2011. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Okay. All right. Um, approval of school board minutes from our special business meeting Tuesday, January 25th, 2011. May I have a motion, please? I motion to approve the school board minutes from January 25th, 2011. Thank you, Kate. Second? Second. Michael? Okay. Um, discussion? All those in favor? All right. Um, do we have comments from student representatives tonight? No comments from the middle school. Um, and high school students. What's going on in the high school? Oh, yeah, I'll start it up. Um, end of January brought a new semester. So um, students are finally kind of getting over finals and getting back in the swing of new schedules. Today also marked the first day of the new SAC president, so it's definitely kind of a period of transition within the school. As um, Ben Berman makes his exit, we definitely want to thank him for all the great work he's done for the last year, and then hopefully another great year for the new president. Yeah, um, the sports playoff seasons are coming to a start as the winter teams get into the regular season, and we wish them good luck with that. Uh, the speech team at the high school uh, won the state championship for the, for the speech league, the National Forensics League. Um, uh, report cards came out today. Uh, big day. <laughs> and lastly, oh yes, um, Winterfest, which is the, the high school kind of spirit week, I guess you could say, is um, commencing next week. Great. Um, Matt, um, do you have your meetings for the SAC? Um, we don't. We're going to set the schedule in the next couple of weeks. Okay, and when you do, can yeah, you definitely get to the board? Great. Any comments or questions for Matt or Reed? David? Well, it may be for Jeff, but I understand the moot court team, excuse me, law school. Our mock trial team won the states and is trying to go to Arizona. I know they're trying to fundraise because I got a letter asking me as the owner of Verlin Dana would I contribute something. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not an owner, I'm an employee, but um, I, I think that's a, uh, a wonderful result and I don't know if um, anybody wants to talk about it, but um, I... We didn't have a big pardon? Didn't we have a Was there a, a fundraising? Not a fundraising conversation. Correct. There was a, there was a recognition, but I didn't know since it's time fundraising whether or not that. Well, it's not on the agenda, so maybe we want to put it on the agenda for the future. Fine with me. Okay. I think that's that's good. Um, okay. Moving into recognition or comments from public on agenda items. Any comments from the public on agenda items? Seeing none, let's move to number five. Under recognition, uh, Steve Conley is going to talk to us a little bit about um, the middle school 
This we believe essays. I have uh, several pieces tonight. Is it all right if I start with the um, the main Native American history and culture essay? Great. Present a little bit on that, and then we've got some students to present their this we believe pieces. Uh, first off, uh, in the eighth grade, as part of the social studies unit on Maine history, many of the eighth graders entered the Maine Native American History and Culture Essay Contest sponsored by the Secretary of State, and this is the third year that we've done this. Um, social studies teachers are pleased to announce that two students uh, were received honors as first and second place in the middle school division for the state contest. Ben Stanley, whose social studies teacher is Tabitha Eastman, won first place, and Lily Jordan in Jamie Michaud's class slash uh, Danielle Kuhnert's class, Jamie's out right now recovering from a uh, broken ankle, it, uh, is in, uh, he, she won second place. So just a little bit about the, uh, the contest. It's open to students in Maine Middle and High Schools, and it's, uh, it calls on students to explore at least one aspect of Maine Native American history, and then to write an essay between 500 to 1,000 words. The essay competition is designed to give students an opportunity to share and showcase what they've learned in a fascinating area of study. Essays are reviewed by a panel of expert judges who select a winner and runner-up in both the Maine and High School categories. Both winners in his or her class are invited to, the sec uh, to be the Secretary of State's guests for a day in Augusta. So those classes will be traveling up there shortly. Um, Ben's, uh, ben is not able to be with us tonight, and his paper uh, is on the Penobscot Indian Nation. He does a beautiful job moving through the, uh, the history of the Penobscots, uh, what they're, the areas that they were in in the state of Maine. He, he goes into the 1600s. Uh, famous leaders of the Penobscot Indians. Uh, there, uh, he talks about the uh, smallpox ep epidemic that started in 1630, and by, uh, there were 10,000 Penobscot Native Americans at that time. And by 1803, it was re reduced to 347 stu uh, Penobscot Indians. So they were on the brink of extinction. He talks about the role they played in the uh, in the American Revolution. He talks about. The, uh, they're, they're siding with the Americans. He gets into pieces about the, the revolution and, and the crucial roles that they played, certain aspects of that. Um, he also mentions that um, when Maine became a state separated from Massachusetts, the Penobscots had, uh, were recognized and had uh, land, goods, and services provided for them. Um, but the Maine actually violated the Non-Intercourse Act, which forbids transfer of Penobscot land without permission from Congress. This is all in Ben's paper. And in 1965, Maine became the first state to create a Department of Indian Affairs. It was a short-lived uh, department, and it was abolished in 1980. And he talks about their current history as well, a uh, rich, exciting history that he found out about that came through in a group that has come through many adversities to become a thriving uh, tribe in the Old Town area today. So Ben's paper was extremely well received, represents his school and his classmates extremely well. Uh, Lily Jordan, her paper is on the fur trade in Wabanaki economics. Uh, Lily would be here tonight except that she's on her three-peat mission. Um, she, uh, as a sixth grader, she won the state, uh, excuse me, the school B and then won the Cumberland County B. Last year she won the school B, the Cumberland County B, the state B, and represented the school and the state in Washington, D.C. And this year she's on a mission to up that record. So that's where she is probably right about now. Um, so she talks about in her paper the lifestyle of the Wabanaki and how that changed with European influence from hunting, fishing, and migratory people uh, to, and people who lived off the land, summered on the coast, moved inland during the, the winter seasons and were completely independent. She then talks about how when the European settlers began to arrive and they began to trade with the Wabanaki and the, the Wabanaki found that the beaver pelts of course were um, uh, in great demand so they began uh, uh, trading in pelts. Um, she talks about how they, they were nearly, the beaver were nearly hunted to extinction. Uh, the Wapanaki did use the beaver for their meats and their fur to make clothes and teeth to make knives. Um, that's previously, but as the trade came along, they began to rely on the French and English 
uh, in the trade for things like knives, kettles, food, clothing, alcohol, muskets, and so forth, um, and how they became dependent on the Europeans and how the Wabanaki culture began to change. Very reflective piece. Uh, not only did the fur trade cause the Wabanaki to dress, eat, and hunt like the Europeans, it also made them dependent on foreigners. And then she gets into a little bit later on, uh, the uh, alcoholism was an, also a new influence in the lives of the Wabanaki, uh, who had never seen or tried alcohol before and did not know of its harmful effects. She also continues to talk about how the uh, resulting of fur trades, further results of that were um, conflicts between tribes, the Wabanaki from Maine and the Mohawk from the New York area. Uh, both she and uh, Ben have excellent citations and uh, um, very, very thorough papers. So first I'd like to congratulate them. Then on to, uh, any questions about that particular piece? Maine Native American? Okay. Um, next we have, uh, Paul Casey is here, and I'll have him come up as well. Paul, come on up. Uh, his students, he can talk a little bit about the assignment that his students had, and we have several of them here today to share the pieces that they've written with. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Um, the assignment that I gave the students, I don't know how many people are familiar with public radio, the uh, program that they ran, um, this I believe. Um, I'd listened to many of those essays, found a lot of them very, very moving. Um, wanted to bring that into my classroom. So what I did from there is there's a collection of these in a book, in a paperback, that uh, I read to the students a couple of days for, you know, a couple of days, two a day for two or three days, and then really kind of started the writing process. Um, and from that process, um, I have three really very strong, very conscious writings. Um, I'm very proud of my students, um, very proud of their insights. You know, one of the things that, as middle school teachers, one of the things that I think the kids in this town do very, very well is they can summarize. They can read, they can summarize, but one of the things that I was really looking for here was just kind of some original thought, original feeling, and I think that really kind of captured what I was looking for in that assignment. So, um, with that said, um, let's see here. We have uh, Angel, why don't these three students come up and join us? Yeah. They all have copies too. Okay. Very good. Okay, Rosie, step right up. You're going to be first. Introduce yourself and take care of the work. I'm Rosie Stevens, and this is my essay. I believe that Thanksgiving can bring people closer together. The best part about Thanksgiving is seeing your family and having a good time. That was my favorite part. When people arrive, that is one of the best moments, because you haven't seen these people in months. I have uncles who travel a lot, and I can rarely see them. I don't get to see who my, my cousin, who goes to college, so this was one of the times I got to see him. I also have aunts, uncles, two more cousins, and grandparents. When we all arrived, it was like we were seeing each other for the first time. I got to see everyone, and all we did was talk about how Thanksgiving was going to be. Doing activities is something that brings us closer together. This Thanksgiving, we went down to Sandwich, Massachusetts, and we all went to a tapestry, a glass museum, and a jam tasting. It was a lot of fun because we did it as a group. Thanksgiving dinner is the best part of all, because everyone is sitting down together at a meal that is homemade. Everyone is there enjoying a great meal, and we all talk about it. Everyone talks and talks like there's no tomorrow. It brings people closer together, and you can feel the love. As you eat, you compliment the people who make you food. So it is another time to spend closer together. As you taste the food and pumpkin pie, you reflect on the feast you just had with your family, the best time of all. After dinner games are always interesting. No one ever won, but the way we played was fun and funny. Mostly we played apples to apples. That's the game where, your fam where you play with your family if you want to stay up late. My family's way of playing is to be the one to convince the judge to pick their card. Then one night we really bonded when we all fought over a game we were playing. It was because we were all confused and no one wanted to play that game. They just wanted to play that game to act. When we had to leave, it was the saddest part of this vacation. We had to say goodbye to everyone. It felt like we lived in the same house all the time, but that was not true. We were the first ones to leave, and most everyone was out shopping, so we could only say goodbye to a few people. I wish I should, could have said goodbye to everyone. 
I think that now I know too much about my family because I spent so much time together. We were all put in the same little house at the same time. We had to do everything together, like eat and watch TV. I can remember the first like night like it was yesterday. We were all there thinking about this weekend and how it was going to turn out. Then we found out it would be great. As we drove away, I remember the fun time we had. Now, I believe that Thanksgiving can bring a family closer together. I've never felt so close to my family. This I believe. I believe that people should respect one another and take into consideration what they do and say before they act impulsively. I believe that people just need to slow down for a minute and think. It's so easy to just blurt something out, something that you don't mean. The thing about that is you can't take back what you said or did. You can't edit it and turn it into something else. If we stopped and took a deep breath, it could really change things. If people thought a little bit more about their words and actions, I believe that we would be happier. There have been many times where I have said something or done something that I knew I would regret later. There have been many times my friends have done the same thing to me. I have been in small fights with friends. The fights were over something stupid that was said. Later I realized that what happened is that we didn't think. We just said the thing that seemed right at the time. If we had taken a moment to consider what we were saying, I think it would have ended very differently. In some situations, I have said the stupid thing. In others, I was the receiver of a stupid comment. Sometimes when you hear something like, you're so mean, or I don't like you anymore, it's hard to tell if what you heard was the truth or just a person having a bad day. If you were the person having a bad day, then maybe you feel like you have a good reason to say something like that. Maybe they bumped into you or said something you didn't like. But in the end, saying what you did will not have helped you. I'm aware that it's hard to stop and say to yourself, will this really benefit me? Did they actually do anything mean? But if everyone made more of an effort to do this, I believe that we would really have a better world. Maybe it would just make a better you, but why wouldn't you want that? There's also the whole problem of Facebook, email, and IM. If you type something mean there, then it's there for the world to see. It's so easy for things to get out of hand. Just last week, I was feeling upset at a friend, so I typed an angry email. Luckily, my dad called me at that exact moment and talked me out of it. He knew that what I... He knew that I was sad, so he asked, what do you think she should have done? And I said, I think she should have thought before she said that to me. Wait, that's it. That's what I believe. And I started my paper. After writing some of this paper, I realized that my dad was right. I would have regretted sending the email if I had done it. Right now, you might be wondering, what do respect and stopping to think have to do with each other? I would say they have a lot in common. Would you hesitate more before insulting that weird kid or your best friend? I believe that you should treat them the same way. Sure, you're a lot closer and more comfortable with one, but you should respect that weird kid, too. It's the whole idea of treat others the way you want to be treated. I know that everyone hears this rule a lot, but I believe that we should take it to heart and try it. If you think about it, what have we got to lose by being kinder people? As we all know, there are many things wrong with the world. There's fighting, hunger, disease, global warming, wildlife destruction, you get it. Okay, so maybe taking a deep breath and thinking for a second might not help hunger and disease, but I think there are several things that could help. First of all, fighting. I would bet that there are wars going on because of arguments between countries. Is that truly necessary? I think people just need to learn when to stop. As you know, this isn't the Stop the War paper. This paper is simply about how important it is to respect other people. This paper is about how you should consider what you say and do. This paper is about how you just need to ask yourself, is this really necessary before you do something dumb? These ideas could really help us be better people. This I believe. Um, I'm Eden, and this is my This I Believe story. I believe that anyone can do what they want to do do what they dream of, and live the life that they want or wish for just as long as they try. When your life feels like it's going in a downward state, know that life, love, and friendships are the things that will keep you, go or that will keep you going. Without them, you are nothing but a shadow. Trying to get to a place where you want to be is difficult, but who said life is easy? No one. So do your best to, in order to get where your heart says you should be. If you don't try, then you should just go sit in a hole somewhere and stare at the places where your life should be, but it isn't. Only people that try in life succeed. Have you ever heard of someone being rich, famous, and happy with him or herself by doing nothing? Sure, the children are famous people, but they only try, oh, they try in life to impress people in what they do. Making goals for yourself will help you get to a place where you want to be. So when life is becoming too, way too much for your little body, keep going. If you stop halfway through, then you won't be able to get where you want to be. Stopping, well, stopping only makes the trip worse. And you might, well, you don't, you most likely don't want that weight on your shoulders. Trying to get will we'll get you to the place where you want to be, not sitting around and doing nothing. If you do nothing, then you will never amount to anything. The people will look down on you and you will feel bad. You will sit in self-pity wishing that the world would just disappear and that everyone would just go away. But it wasn't their fault. If you had just kept going, then your life would have been much easier. 
People you see sitting on the side of the road are people that tried. They did a good job and they did their best. However, for some, they didn't try hard or they didn't try hard enough. There's are people that have just given up on hope and have become, in their minds, worthless. If they tried again, maybe they'll get to a better place, but most just stay there, not wanting to try. I believe that when your heart says that you must get to a place of happiness and your head says that you can't make it, that you should listen to your heart. You may, um, your mind may want you to stay, but your heart will always show where your soul should lie. You may think that if you might want to be rich and famous someday, but your hopes and dreams might lie somewhere else, and then, then you should go there. There once was a girl named Susan, and she want, oh, loved chocolate. But not just chocolate. She wanted her own chocolate factory. She knew that if she got good grades, then she could easily get into a good college. So she studied a lot and got into Harvard. At Harvard, oh, Harvard she got a master's in technology and physics. After a little while, she started making chocolate in her apartment. Then a businessman tasted her chocolate. The man loved it. A few months later, she had a booming chocolate company in, that everyone loved. She tried, and she got to the place where she wanted to be. Susan set goals for herself, small at first, and then she achieved these goals, and she got to where she wanted to be. Now she's happy and living in a big mansion with the Florida Keys. The entire point of that story is that you should try. Trying is what makes people who they are. People try and do things that they want to or need to, wherever they, or whenever they feel like doing so. This is how people live. These are the reasons that I believe that if you try, you can succeed and finally get to live in your dreams. So this is a great opportunity to demonstrate uh, writing across the content area that we're focusing on, and it also is a great opportunity for them to have an authentic audience to speak to. Uh, I don't think there's any extra credit connected to this. Is there, Paul? I don't know. No, no extra credit. So this is purely... Pardon? Love of, love of the sport. Okay, <laughs> so it's purely an opportunity for these students to have uh, to receive recognition and have a, an audience to uh, speak to. So we also had a piece by uh, Natalie Vaughn here tonight, and I think that was it, the four pieces. Um, so, okay, ladies, thanks very much for joining us. Did you folks have any questions, comments for? Any comments the from the board? I just want to say thank you very much for the hard work you did writing and for coming here tonight and uh, sharing it with us. It takes a lot of guts to speak up at that podium, and um, I hope I see you again next year doing it, or later this year doing it again. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so course. much for coming tonight and for sharing your, your essays with us. Just the examples of the, the Native American essays, the things I learned from that, and then listening to these students. For instance, Rosie mentioned that she went for Thanksgiving down, I think it was in the Sandwich Mass, and then she went to a glass mm. museum. I would have thought she'd have gone to a bread factory. I had no idea. Oh. But, anyway, oh. Shit. no credit for that one. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, the next piece that we have here is, is a really interesting thing. Uh, one of our students, Julian Wiskowski, is uh, guaranteeing me that I get a free subscri subscription to all his games for life and all his uh, technological productions if I have him up here tonight. So Julian, come on up. Uh, Julian's going to explain to us, take a few minutes and talk about uh, not only the first game that he produced and uh, created uh, individually and then sold to Google Apps? Um, Apple. Apple. I uh, see. Uh, you can tell me about it later. Okay. And now he's done a second one as well. The floor is yours. Yeah. Um, well, I started um, in this program last summer, and I got uh, my Apple's developer license because um, I really like playing video games, and I thought that it would be fun to try and make them. I didn't know that it was harder than I thought it was, so I got the program and had no idea how. To make it. So just um, like November of last year, I found this other program that you don't have to do the computer programming or whatever uh, to make the games, and it just made sense to me. So with that program, I made um, my first app, which was Anti Grab Ninja for the iPhone. And um, it's a game where you have a little square um, ninja and you have to guide them with the accelerometer in the iPhone by tilting it um, through different mazes uh, and there are multiple levels on it and then um, I put that out um, for Apple to approve it around a month or so ago and it took me about a month to make 
and I uh, put it out, and about a few weeks later, Apple approved it, and it was on the iPhone App Store. Wow. Um, and then a few weeks later, I started making uh, the, uh, an iPad game, because we just got a new iPad. And I made um, a retro Pong game uh, for the iPad that um, it's not really anything really big, but I thought it was really fun. Uh, so I put that out for uh, the iPad and App Store, and it also got approved by Apple. And now I'm working on other uh, games to put on. So. Wow. That's great. Awesome. Comments from the board? Questions? Julian, that's great. That's fabulous. Um, uh, now, your folks, I know they're artists. Um, they had nothing to do with this. This is your... Uh, not yet. Yeah. Some stuff for it, but... Yeah. That's great. So do you go to the mailbox every day and look for the... It actually uh, gets, like, uh, downloaded of course through the internet. The That's great. Yep, yeah, wow. every day I check uh, my iPhone because I've actually got an app that tracks the sales of my apps on it. Um, so after day, I just look on it and see it's only like two. That's great. But. That's awesome. Well, I'll do one because I can do the anti-gravity. Um, so. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Julian. So when I was reading the email about this, I was sitting in my living room when my son was home from college. He's 20. And as I'm reading it, I'm saying to him, listen to this. And I just read it to him and he goes, really? Yeah, really. Can I buy it? That's <laughs> <laughs> a buck. You got a dollar? Go ahead. <laughs> he bought it, and he's looking at it, and he's going, really? A kid in your school? <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, high school, Jeff, do you want to come and speak to us about Presidential Scholar nominations? Thank you. Um, these are um, awards, nominations that are sponsored by the United States Department of Education. They're based largely on test scores, but there's some other factors in there as well that have never been entirely publicly acknowledged or exactly what they are, but generally has to do with really strong scholars and leaders um, and kids who have various art artistic success and involvement in school and the community and that sort of thing. Um, so in a typical year, we might have one or two students identified as candidates to apply for um, semifinalist status, and this year um, we have five. Um, so I simply wanted to identify them, read their names. Um, Will Bolenbeck, um is a senior. All these are seniors, obviously. Peter Governale, um, Rob McDonald, Jack Queenie and your very own school band member, Mr. Matt McClavick. So we wanted to congratulate them publicly. It really is a huge accomplishment. I also know it's a lot of work to get from this stage to the next, because I know there's lots of essays to write and lots of things to keep you busy if you choose to do that and others. So I hope you do. It's a great recognition. Yes. Thank you. That's great. That's great. Congratulations, Matt. Very proud of you. Any other comments from the board? Um, we'll give people a chance to leave, and then we'll move on to communications. <laughs> okay. um, communications, I think we have two retirements, and Ken, do you want to tell us about those? Mary Beth Benoit, who I believe has been with us for 37 of her mm -hmm. 38 years, I think she references that stat in her letter, mm -hmm. so we'll certainly miss her presence at the middle school and another veteran um, teacher leader at Pond Cove, Sherry Robinson, and I know uh, the staff at Pond Cove are going to miss her because I've already heard stories in the short time I've been here of the value she adds at Pond Cove. Great. Well, thank you. Um, and we will miss them. Um, Sherry, I know, will be tremendously missed for her. Um, her efforts in Pond Cove, and um, we wish Mary Beth all the best. Uh, moving on to new business, um, 7A, consideration to approve the school board credentials review committee charge. Um, do I have a motion? Yes, I, I, I'd like to make a combined motion, a two-part motion, one to 
uh, update the CRC the Credentialing Review Committee's charge and to nominate uh, uh, a slate of 11 members for that. Okay, so combined um, A and B. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the first part, I'm going to move this in two parts, uh, but it can be voted on as one. Um, I move that the uh, school board um, accept uh, a slate of 11 members to serve on this credentialing review committee for the purpose of assisting the school board in evaluating the credentials of superintendent candidates. And I nominate the following individuals, Sarah Lennon from the town council, Mary Townsend from the school board, Michael Moore from the school board, Dominic DePatsy from the DLT, Jeff Shedd from the DLT, Dwight Ely, although I, I like to pronounce it Eli myself, teacher, Representative Lynn Spadinger, teacher, Gail Rice, citizen, Sandy Sinclair, a citizen, Laura Lee Scheidel, a citizen, and Bill Marshall, which will be another citizen representative. And I would like to move the board to accept uh, the following updated um, credentialing review charge, which will replace, which will become the operative charge, and it is as follows. The CRC, which is the Credentialing Review Committee, will meet under the direction of the school board and the school board's search consultant, Jackie Roy, on March 5th, to review and provide feedback to the board on, on applicants pursuant to such process and procedure as may be established established by said consultant. All information acquired around the search and potential applicants shall be highly confidential in nature, and all members of the CRC shall complete a confidentiality training prior to the screening work and shall be required to sign and submit a confidentiality agreement prior to commencing any work. Once the CRC completes its work on March 5th, the group will be disbanded and the committee's findings will be presented to the school board by the consultant early the following week. Thank you, David. Um, do I have a second? A second. Okay, yeah. Um, discussion? The only thing I would like to add is, uh, having listened in our meeting to the uh, slate of people that applied, it was very impressive, the people in our town who were willing to serve. Uh, I can say for myself, the decision was tough. Uh, we tried to, um, you know, combine a variety of factors, experience, knowledge, uh, different groups in the town, and it was a tough choice, and I support the slate as, as we, as I submitted. Other discussion? Um, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Michael Moore for his work um, on the CRC uh, nominations. Michael did a great deal of work interviewing hours and hours, calling people and talking to them and making sure they understood the charge. And um, I, it took a lot of organization and time. So thank you for that, Michael. Thank you. OK. All right, so all those in favor? It, has it been second? Oh, I thought we had yes. a second. Yes, Kat. <clears throat> all those in favor? OK, thank you. All right, so um, Kathy, we have consideration of the following policies for second reading. You wanna... Yep, um, we have two policies and two rules that went back to the policy committee last time, and there are uh, a, there is a minor change, and you will find it in yellow on like the very back page. I believe it's on the rules and not on the, well, it's on the rules. Uh, the, the change is that, uh, like for instance, on IJNDBR, in the last page, page six, um, under nine, it will now read, the school district may seize any privately owned computer used by a student in school without authorization as required by these rules and the contents of the computer may be searched in accordance with applicable laws and policies. 
The computer will be returned to the owner when it is no longer needed for investigatory or evidentiary purposes. And that change is on both, um, both the policies. Other than that, it's the same policy that we saw for first reading the last time. So with that, um, I move to accept uh, policies GCSA and GCSAR and IJNDB and IJNDBR. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, discussion. Any discussion? All right. All, right. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Um, consideration for the following policy for first reading, Kathy. Um, yes, we have in our packets um, policy JRAE, uh, and there is an addition to this policy. We already have the policy in place, but we are adding on page two of three, section D, student social security <coughs> numbers. This addition is being made because it is in um, conjunction with what we were already doing and what the board voted on back in November or December about disclosing Social Security numbers. So we are just adding this to the policy that, so that we're consistent with our practice. So I would like to move that we accept uh, JRA-E policy annual notice of student education records and information rights. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, again. Discussion? All those in favor? All right. Moving on to E in communications. Um, Ken, consideration to approve a leave of absence for 2011 to 2012 school year for Pond Cove staff member Tara Bucci. Yeah, <clears throat> Tara presently is on leave for the rest of this year and she would like to extend it for the 2011-2012 school year. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? May I have a motion? I motion to approve um, consideration uh, how do we do it? Consideration to approve a leave of absence for the 2011-2012 school year for Tara Bucci. So you motion to approve? I motion to approve. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, do I have a second? Okay. Discussion? She's a uh, fab, I, in my opinion, she's a fabulous teacher and I'm so glad she uh, has a healthy, happy baby, but I wish she could Papoose her baby and come to school because she does a really nice job. Um, so if it would help to give her a year off and come back happy and rested, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you, Kate. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Sounds yeah. Thank you. Okay, moving on to item F, consideration to approve the following athletic and extracurricular nominations. Do we have anyone, Jeff's not here to present those. Do you want to present them? Sure, I think uh, background information is sort of self-explanatory, but for the benefit of the public, the board is acting on the nomination of Joe Doan as the expansion boys basketball coach. Dan Sullivan as the expansion boys basketball coach. And in the high school, a couple of uh, co-curricular nomination, Elaine Broussard as an outing club co-advisor and Chris Drake. Uh, the last two positions I mentioned are funded by C and they're not part of the school budget. In addition, Pierre Norries is the addition that I mentioned. Um, and Pierre is going to be our middle school swim assistant. And if you have any specific questions, principals of the school are here to answer them more thoroughly than I can. Okay. Um, do I have a motion? 
try it again. Okay. Sure. I motion to approve uh, the, oh, wait a minute, consideration of uh, all the, the slate okay. for the um, middle school and the high school. Okay. A second, please. Second. Jim? Any discussion? Uh, I do have a question. Or, or go ahead. I have a question. Um, the middle school swim assistant, <clears throat> this is a new position and a new hire. Um, is this an addition to our budget? Last year, as we were working through the budget pieces, one of the in, in the uh, midpoint budget, one of the pieces that was added in at the middle school was, I think, six thousand dollar account that would um, allow for our B team, our expansion team coaches, so that we would be back to our uh, no cut policy. And so the money is there; it's in an account. Um, it's paying for Joe's part, for Dan's. It's, it would pay for um, Pear because right now we have, uh, we have a swim team coach, but the number of kids would make it unmanageable in that setting. And we also don't want to make it so that sixth graders can't participate this year. It's one of the few activities they can participate in. Thank you. Um, the expansion teams, uh, uh, what grades are those? Seven and eight. Um, Dan Sullivan is uh, continuing the expansion role that he played last year. It was actually a, a non-paid position last year. He did it as, as courtesy to help us out. And then Joe Doan, um, in the seventh grade, what we have is uh, we had 19 or 20 players come out for the team. And there is there, there are a couple of guys who are, are really found, uh, Excuse me. Fundamentally sound, um, and there are a lot of guys who just seem to be about at the same point. So uh, Joe's decision was he was going to pick up extra games. He was going to rotate players in. No cuts were made to that particular team, and so he's picked up extra practices, extra games. So there's a partial stipend for that, covering the hours. So it's not a real expansion team, it's just an extended... It's an expanded team. It's an expanded, <laughs> and an expanded yes. season. Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Great. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, right. thank you, Steve. Oh. Do we, um, because I'm a big supporter of middle school athletics, uh, do we still have money left in that fund in case we need it for spring sports as well? Yes, I think we have uh, 2000 about $2,000 left in that for that purpose. Okay, thanks. That's great. Thanks. All right. Um, all those in favor? Okay. Um, item G, consideration to approve the replacement of the boilers at the high school at a cost of $350,000. Do I have a motion? David. I'd like to modify the language here a little bit because it's not quite accurate. I move to approve replacement of the boilers at the high school at a cost of 350000 excluding financing costs. Because the 350000 does not include financing costs. So if you say at a cost of 350000 that implies it includes financing costs. It does not. So my motion would be to approve replacement of the boilers at the high school at a cost of 350000 Excluding financing You might costs. say up to 350000 because it may, it may actually come in a little lower. I'd be glad to change my motion to approve replacement of the boilers at the high school um, at up to a cost of 350000 excluding financing costs, which I assume we will approve by a separate motion, the type and the amount of financing. Okay. Second. All right. Discussion. Is this running off of what we did at the workshop? Is this, because there's nothing in the packet that, is this the same information that we had at the workshop? Yeah, yes it is. For the benefit of the public, uh, the school board tonight is considering a motion to replace the boilers at the high school. They had an extensive discussion 
at a workshop uh, previous to this, and so it's the very same information. What's new is how we might finance it, and we'll discuss that at the next finance um, committee meeting. There's been some new developments there, so we may have a much better um, financial picture as to the cost by the time we meet again. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, any more discussion? All those in favor? All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to number eight, committee reports. Any um, committee reports? Anyone? David? Um, a short one. I have, um, um, I guess, chairman or chairperson of the uh, legislative committee. Um, I have contacted our three representatives to ask them for an update on two items. One, uh, various bills to change the EPS formula to raise the, the portion of the EPS formula to be more income oriented as opposed to real estate property oriented, which would work to the disadvantage probably of CAPE. And secondly, to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to report on the status of several bills pending on um, requiring uh, insurance companies to share utilization data so as to allow a bidding process for insurance for both the municipality, health insurance for both the municipality and the school. Uh, I have not received responses yet, but hopefully we'll have a meeting shortly. Thank you, David. Anyone else? Okay. Um, public comment on non-agenda items. Anyone? Hi. Uh, you can state your name. Um, and so, your my name is uh, Joe Whalen, um, 3 Wainwright Drive. I've recently communicated. Thank you for your thoughtful response, Mary and John. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to come up here and talk about something that happened. La and, and the reason I'm here at the school board is, as many people as I talked to in the school system, everybody kind of laid it at the feet of the school board as to what happened. And I think it's just the, the way I could communicate this is just to tell the story. On Friday the 28th, I received an email that said that my daughter was in arrears of $46 in the lunchroom. And I've received these communications. She's in third grade. She's nine years old. I've received these communications since she's in kindergarten. Usually to the tune of $14 or $20 and immediately make payment on that. So we received this. I, you know, I received it on my work email. My wife receives it on our home email. And that Monday, when my daughter went to school, I usually don't take notice of this, but she's recently taken to emailing her friends in the morning. Should we buy lunch? Guess what the lunch menu is? Are you going to buy or are you going to bring? And it was, uh, she was very excited to go into school that day and buy her lunch. And when she got to school, with a check in her backpack. Now, remember, she's nine years old, so as a nine-year-old will do, homework included stays in the backpack, right? So the check never got you know, put forth, and there's more to that story about why we received the $46 notice, and I'll get to that in a second. But when she gets to the counter, now she gets to pick out with her best friend to her right. She goes through the lunchroom. She gets to pick out. She hands the card in, and the lunch is taken from her at the end of the line, and she's handed a brown bag. Um, and I am from a much, and I was talking to Dave, the reason I'm here is David told me that the meeting was going on, although I was wondering if I heard about it, so you can play. Wait, don't blame this. <laughs> we met in the gym, and I said, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I come from a much, I come from, you know, New York City area, much more, and I always said, you know, I wish my, daughter didn't go to such a Pollyannish place. I wish it was more difficult. I wish she had a little bit more hard knocks. But I can't imagine being put through that. That, was, that had to be a, 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 such a humiliating experience. Well, she comes home that day. She immediately goes from the cafeteria to the nurse's office saying she, has, she feels sick because she can't go back and face her friends uh, in the classroom. You know, uh, so um, uh, I, you know, I call. I, 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 
I've never been here. I've never called the principal. I've never complained. I've thought that this was, you know, that the experience that my daughter has had has been outstanding from preschool that she went locally to, you know, right on through. This has just been an outstanding. The teachers have been great, and I, was, I, I just can't believe a place like this exists coming from where I came from. Um, but, uh, you know, so I called, I, you know, I called the, uh, the food principal, principal put me in touch with the food manager. The food, well, it comes to, you know, where they say, well, you know, we did have a difficulty with Roadrunner communicating that people were in arrears. Because every time we have been, and we checked our emails, I can't believe we would allow, for, you know, first of all, it's $46. All right, and I have to tell you that, you know, $46 times multiple hundreds adds up, but $46 was astonishing to me that they would snatch the lunch out of my daughter's hand in front of her friends and hand her a brown paper bag. And here's, here's why I'm here and what I would offer as a consideration is that what was she supposed to do that day? She's a child. She's nine years old. It's not like she's saying, well, yeah, I tried to beat the system. Right? I was home unaware of that this was unaware that this was happening. My wife was home unaware that this was happening. And what was she to do? There had to be some, more, some sort of safeguard put in, I think, to make sure that a nine-year-old wasn't subject to this kind of humiliation. Now, think of a nine-year-old. If it happened to me, I'd be humiliated. I remember being in a, a restaurant and uh, a person said, well, your card's declined. You know, you, know, you know, dating myself when American Express had a $5,000 limit. I went over the limit and I was, all right, you know, but magnifying it by, to, to a nine-year-old in front of her friends is something that has to be safeguards. The parents have to be informed, not via, you know, well, we have this email system, but, you know, something has to happen where a card may be taken away. You know, we have a problem. Here's your lunch. We have a problem with your card, and then maybe call the parent and say, you know, you've been in arrears for so long, we can't allow this to continue. Or repeat offenders. I've I uh, was communicated back to me, and I can't remember because, you know, I think that's the only thing I did last week was communicate to people back and forth about this. I was so uh, upset about it. Um, is that, you know, uh, j just the just the overall communication breakdown to where it falls on the, you know, fell at the feet of uh, at my nine-year-old daughter who was very upsetting to, to me, and. Uh, you know, the last thing I'll say, you know, and, and so I think there has to be some better communication. And one person communicated to me that said, if I don't do this, the school board will fire me. So, um, you know, that's, that's why I, I doubted that was the case, but uh, I wanted to make sure. The last thing I want to say, especially to Mary and John, you know, I, I, uh, I never said, you know, I realize why you do this. You do this in the best interest of the town the school system and I never thanked you too especially because I complained to you and I hope my emails weren't over the top inappropriate but I just wanted to thank you for your you know, your service I certainly am not serving so thank you very much and that's that's the message I want you know and the overall message is you know communication I mean we we what became what became the aspirin for a headache of communication has now become the headache, and that's email, right? I mean, you know, we just rely on email. We communicate. How so? Well, we have this automated email system that goes out. Not, not reliable. And to throw it at the, the, the feet of a nine-year-old daughter is, uh, is why I wanted to come here and communicate, that I think that that was not, uh, that was not the greatest thing. So, that it? Thank you. Thanks for coming and sure. sharing your story with us. And I'm sorry that your daughter had to go through that. Um, David? Can I just make a, um, we, we have struggled with this policy for a while. Um, just so you know, it is in, I believe, going to be scheduled at some point for our policy committee to review it. Um, I, I think all of us are sincerely sorry for what happened to your nine-year-old daughter. It is. As I, as I will now explain to you, and I might have said something earlier, but no rule is perfect, and I've never been able to craft a perfect rule in 35 years of practicing of law, but there's always room for improvement, whether it's, you know, notice and a certain amount of time passes, whatever it is that is something that we are considering trying to draft, 
And hearing this kind of input and these kind of examples helps us uh, in our drafting of policy. So we certainly, at least I'm on the policy committee, and I certainly will listen and try to come up with a solution that doesn't uh, punish a first-time offender, a nine-year-old girl, uh, in such a way, if possible. Thanks. And so I, I, on behalf of the book, well, I can only, remembering our rules, I'll speak for me, I, I, I apologize that that happened. And I still don't hold it against you that you're a 35-year litigator. So. <laughs> Mary, um, can I just, I, is your first name Joe? I, I've, Joe, yes. Um, I, was, I was looking for your last name. My son in second grade also got the, um, his lunch taken away because I was 30, whatever the amount was. Yeah. And, um, and my senior in high school, his lunch was also taken away. And I... I um, also, uh, you know, was frustrated with our system. So, and I, and I talked, I was at the health and wellness uh, district meeting today, and the cafeteria um, from the high school and Pine Cove and the middle school were there, and we talked about that, how to help that situation because the budget, you know, because of the situation that has got us to this point of um, make you know having the school people the cafeteria people take it take the lunches away um, and this the cafeteria people had a great idea that the lunch trays that the lunches not be put in brown bags but very gently a different tray could be given or there's way we're definitely working on it is what I want to say. Not just because my children got it ripped away, but because the lunch people really don't want to take the trays away. Um, so I apologize. You know, well, I, thank you. Appreciate your time. You, um, any other public comments on nine agenda items? Um, school board agenda requests. Anything for next month? And you can always come to me. Um, um, just, just a thought, and maybe the board doesn't want to do this, or maybe they do, but we used to do a um, building principal update where the principals would stand and say a few words about what was going on in their buildings. I personally enjoyed that because it made me feel a little more connected. Maybe mm -hmm. others don't, um, or maybe the principals would prefer not to. But um, an idea... Um, it didn't have to be long. It was just sort of a, a summary of this is what's going on in this building or that building, and it was it was a nice way to keep your fingers um, just a knowledge of, of what's happening in the schools, especially for some of us who don't have children in the schools anymore. Yes, in our meeting earlier, Kathy didn't know when winter break was <laughs> for the first time in how many years, Kathy? <laughs> well, quite a few. <laughs> I know. I think that sounds like a great idea. So. But it's up to the board. I'm just throwing that out for consideration. Okay. I'd love to hear um, from community service as well, because there's so many great programs going on there that, Janet, mm -hmm. if, you, if you only... <laughs> Not now. <laughs> if you'd like to, Thanks. you're welcome. <laughs> great. So maybe we'll talk about it at our next agenda setting um, meeting. Um, okay. Announcements of upcoming meetings. We have a meeting coming up. Policy tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at 8.30. Okay. Got back. And just that our finance committee meeting is next week as opposed to the following week because of the vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and following the finance committee meeting, there will be a workshop. It will not deal with budget um, as originally slated. Um, because the budget workshop has been moved to March, um, we will be talking about um, the interview process that we'll be using for the superintendent interviews in that meeting. And so that's next Tuesday. Okay. I think that's it. That is... Move to adjourn. Oh, very nice. Second. All those in favor? Did we break what, last week's record? No, I, no we didn't. It was, no. It was minutes. Um, you know what?